What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles' YouTube channel. Today we do another world's introduction, and this time we have Germany. And if you just want to introduce yourself and where exactly you're from. Yeah, my name is David Hochmann, and I'm from uh, Cologne, which is in the very west. Yeah, I'm uh, Ole, I'm from Berlin. Yeah, my name is Fati, and I'm from Düsseldorf, which is near Cologne. Okay, sweet. Now, I guess the first question that a lot of people want to know is, what exactly got you into Pokemon? Uh, <laughs> well, this is... The thing is, I, I did play the video games for, like, my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I was just collecting the cards, like, yeah, a fan does. And then some friend of mine was like, uh, let's just play a tournament, because we were so old that no one really wanted to uh, play with us at school, and the most people like didn't, uh, didn't play it anymore. And we actually planned to go on tournaments earlier, but I was not old enough, so my parents didn't allow it. And then I went to a tournament with my starter deck, and I was like 05. <laughs> and then I was just like, yeah, fuck this, I will try to get better. And yeah, now I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, I started in elementary school uh, when Pokemon came out. Uh, I started co to collect the uh, the cards. My parents bought me boosters, and um, for some reason I stopped when I changed uh, to high school, and then started again when I met some friends who uh, wanted to play Pokemon Two. It was in 2003, I guess, and uh, I downloaded a rule book from the internet and tried to teach my friends how to play this game. And yeah, two years later, we uh, participated in our first tournament. Uh, my record was 0-3 with a Venusaur EX deck. It was uh, really bad, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it took it took almost three years for me to. Uh, be successful at tournaments, but yeah. Yeah, and for me, I I started playing the video game, too, in my whole life, since the first gen. And in the card game, I got introduced in the uh, primary school at first. I got this starter star set with Mewtwo, I guess it was, and Jinx and stuff. It was pretty cool, but I did play it competitive. I just collected them, and um, I reintroduced 2013 when uh, my girlfriend at the time just started collecting the cards, and I just said, "Okay, that's not a problem. Uh, I can play the game competitively if you want and get the promos and stuff." So I participated in a battle road here in Düsseldorf, and I think I went two three with a Tornadus EX Mewtwo Lugia deck, which was okay at that time. Okay. So I guess the next question is, what made you stick around for Pokemon for so long? I know some of y'all stayed here play for a pretty long time, but uh, what made you stick in the game for so long? Uh, it's just fun. And well, the thing, the reason why I don't stop playing is basically because I like the people who play it. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you go to a tournament and you can just like random talk to your opponent about all, all kind of stuff and it's it's fun and also you have like your friends who travel with you and most most of the time the uh, train trip to the tournament is more exciting than playing the tournament and also the game is fun and I just like like I enjoy building decks and yeah just play it. Yeah, I think David already mentioned the uh, important things about uh, Pokemon. It's uh, the people, of course, uh, like meeting people at tournaments, uh, meeting uh, new friends, and yeah, uh, trying to figure out new strategies is also a very nice uh, thing about this game, uh, which uh, made me stick for almost 10 years now. Yeah. Yeah, for me it's also the community, and I don't play as long as the two others here in the call, and I'm still a newbie, I say, and therefore there's still plenty of time left for me. True. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the uh, the next question is, you know, you play at a lot of tournaments and you go to a lot of different, you know, nationals and everything like that. But what has been your favorite tournament so far, and what has been your best, 
I guess achievement at a tournament. My favorite tournaments. Yeah. Oh. Doesn't have to like maybe something crazy happened there. Maybe you didn't win, but I I don't know. <sighs> If anyone else has something in mind, I would like skip it and answer it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about it. Okay, okay. Alright, what about your best? Uh, oh, you're good. You're good. I actually have a favorite tournament series. It's the uh, Arena Cup in Germany. Okay. Um, it's uh, like a regional level uh, tournament series, which uh, has four, four tournaments in one year. And yeah, I already managed to win uh, three of uh, the Arena Cups in Hamburg, uh, so it makes makes the uh, most uh, successful tournament for me. Uh, yeah, that's why uh, I love this tournament series. I hope uh, the Arena Cup will return to Hamburg uh, this year. Last year there wasn't an Arena Cup in Hamburg, and uh, last year I didn't win one. <laughs> so uh, it has it has to be in Hamburg again uh, for me to win one. Okay. And for me, it would be the Arena Cup this year in Berlin, and uh, it was the first tournament of the year, the first big tournament for us. And um, I, I ended up winning a tournament with Pyro, which was huge for me at that point. Uh, it was pretty funny because actually we just uh, missed our bus there, and I already finished the uh, my thoughts of going to Berlin, but then my father just said, "Come." Let's go drive 500 kilometers and uh, go to Berlin for a weekend. So it was pretty decent, and I ended up winning the tournament. So it's always a big part. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on winning too. Thank, both thank of you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are there are a lot lot of very funny tournaments uh, that happened, but I think my favorite was a city championship in Koblenz a few years ago when uh, Sableye and Garbodor were in the format, but the newest set was Dragons Exalted, but I played Save Like Garbador, and the, my only my deck I played uh, four Crushing Hammers, and like three Enhanced Hammers, and the only way I could win was just to uh, um, to attack the whole time with Save Like just Crushing Hammer. And I also played Exit Drill, which deals fifty damage, and you put a Trainer card from Discard Pile on your hand, and so I just played Catcher Crushing Hammer the whole time. And the only reason I won was because two of my opponents, we had best of one, had their, uh, their tool scrapper prize. And then the final I actually donked someone. <laughs> and also the uh, trip was very funny. Uh, we were with, with five friends. And there is this ticket where you can use very slow trains. But if you are five people, you don't pay much. So we woke up at like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I just go went there, and I just played some troll deck, and I managed to win. <laughs> and my my most successful tournament, I would say, was the um, European Championship in 2013, where I finished second with um, Darkrai Mewtwo. I lost in the finals because I didn't have a supporter card twice. Oh, no. But still, it was it was just a very huge tournament. We had like 400 people attending, and I. I managed to get through three rounds, and was very close that I even got top 32. But then I won uh, until the finals. Okay, very nice. Now, overall, what is your top three favorite decks of all time? Of all time? Yes. There are so many decks. I know you got. We got to narrow it down um, to three. We got. We got to get down to three. Okay, three decks. Um, I really. Liked a uh, Tyranitar from Stormfront. Um, with like, yeah, you could attach energy cards from your discard pile whenever your opponent uses a poker power, and you deal more damage for each energy card, and you could deal like 30 to each of your opponent's Pokemon. And back in this time, you could play like every random stage one Pokemon. So you could play Nidoqueen, which heals you, you could play Alakazam, which was like you can cancel your opponent's uh, poker powers, and all that stuff. It was very funny. You had that Weavile, you had so many stuff you could play, and when I started, it was a very cheap deck, and it was like the first competitive deck I played. And every tournament I changed my list, um, played Alakazam instead of Nidoqueen, I also played Donphan, Machamp, like every card you could play in this deck. It was just very cool. Then the next deck I uh, started enjoying was uh, Luxchomp, because you 
won every game. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was like you you couldn't lose with Lux Jump unless your opponent uh, played it also or you had like a lot of bad luck. And it just felt like you cannot lose with this deck, uh, which was also a very cool um, experience. And then the next deck I really, really liked was, I don't know, Darkrai decks. Like Darkrai Mewtwo or Darkrai Terrakion. Darkrai Mewtwo was my favorite. Because it was just like, it was a very easy strategy. You had like, you attach energy cards to Darkrai and play Pokemon Catcher the whole time. But this Pokemon Catcher gave you so many options. Um, and the mo a lot of people in this time used their catch of wrong. I had one game at the, at the ECC uh, where someone played catcher from my save line and knocked it out. And it was like, okay, that was weird because you have the seven prize game and you just catch it into it. And a lot of people did stuff like this or they catch the wrong Pokemon. And I really enjoyed playing this. Also, I like version Genesect, but I think this are my top three decks. Okay. Uh, the first deck I want to talk about is uh, Empoleon from the 07-08 season. I managed to win my first tournament with it. It was a regional championship in Hanover. And I played uh, Empoleon with a Mantine, which said all water Pokemon or basic, I don't know, uh, had two less retreat cost. And a Palkia level X, which said you could switch your Pokemon and your opponent has to switch his Pokemon too. Yeah, it's like both both like players that. get a catcher. Yeah. 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 And um, I won this tournament because the metagame was almost 100% Magmotar uh, in this tournament. I, I guess it was Magmotar with Togekiss or something like that. And uh, yeah, Empoleon versus Magmotar was uh, an easy win. I think I played four, uh, four or five rounds against Magmotar. Then I played against another Emporian deck, which was way better uh, than my deck. I lost it that round. In top four, I faced another Magmotar, and the guy who beat me in the Swiss rounds uh, somehow lost to my finals opponent. And yeah, so I, I could uh, play in finals against the Dark Raider VX deck, and I don't know how uh, he lost against him because it was so easy to win against this deck. I don't know. Yeah, that's what, that was my first win at all, and uh, the second uh, deck that I liked uh, was Electric uh, in uh, various variants, but the, the one which I liked most was in the 2012 season. Uh, for Worlds 2012 I played Electric uh, with uh, Shaman who could switch the energies and uh, I guess there was Mewtwo in it, there was uh, Tornadoes in it, and the the part which made me excited about this deck was uh, it, uh, although it had a uh, not so good matchup against Darkrai, uh, Mewtwo could uh, beat it at, at all alone. So uh, uh, I had some games at Worlds where, where I uh, got my Mewtwo out, uh, put energies with uh, Electric on it, and played a Shaman to put another energy on it and then one hit KO that uh, fully loaded Darkrai EX with my Mewtwo and my opponents just uh, sat there and uh, were like, what the fuck did just happen? <laughs> and uh, that's uh, that's the funny part about this uh, deck and uh, the tournament at all was uh, 2012. I also played Electric one year later with Zekrom EX and Hypnotoxic later. I was 3 and 0 oh in, in the first three rounds and then I lost 5 rounds in a row, I don't know how. <laughs> I just had a lot of bad luck. So I uh, went 3-5 and then uh, I uh, switched to another deck. And the third deck, I had it in mind and now I forgot it. Um, <laughs> I think I could mention the Vileplume decks. Uh, Vileplume decks also, uh, all, um, uh, uh, were my favorites for a long time. Uh, I played Vileplume like uh, Ross Coffin did with uh, The Truth uh, after it was revealed. I played Vileplume with, uh, I guess, what was in there? You played Aselgore at National. Uh, with Aselgore, right. Okay. Um, you played uh, the yeah, version? 
Uh, no, Vanellox uh, okay. wasn't a deck that I played, at least, uh, although uh, at ECC I played a Vanellox version, but not the one with uh, the par uh, paralysis, but the one which said you could have your opponent switch his Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I played at ECC. Yeah, um, at Nationals 2012 I played a very early version of Vibeplume Asalgor before it was revealed in the United States. It was without Chandelure. I tried uh, to uh, get in uh, Kingdra from Unleashed, but it didn't work. Uh, so I uh, chose Yan Mega as my uh, secondary support uh, attacker. And yeah, it worked out really well. I uh, was in two, top 32 before I lost against the Dark deck. Okay. Yeah, then for me it would be Pyro at first, because it was always uh, delicious if your opponent switched his cards over and saw, oh no, it's the Pyro and I have no odds for it. <laughs> yeah, I still and hate you. It was, it was al always awesome to play against Plasma decks and it was kind of cool, good stories about it. And the uh, second deck would be Lender's Ride to Gabador, uh, which won the US Nationals last year. It was a pretty strong deck in my opinion, had uh, some very strong combinations and I won my first regionals with it. So. I think. Yeah, you won against me in top four because I didn't <laughs> play it with Grafka. Yeah. <laughs> because of that, against this Virisian uh, Victini deck, right? Yeah, it was a fun deck because I already have 500 points and I played version Victini yeah. <laughs> uh, with the Genesis deck. But it, it was a, a strong uh, call this uh, day, I guess, and I think my, my third deck would be Virisian Genesis because there were so many combinations with this deck, and uh, you could play it with Rift Limb, with uh, like, uh, what's the, what was there? the consistency list with bicycles and stuff. It was a very strong deck, consistent deck, and uh, I have a lot of good memories about this deck too. What was your favorite version of Rose Genesect though? Uh, it was the Drift Limb variant, okay. but the very first one, which was first famous in Japan, and then I think we started playing it in. Germany 2014 in the Arena Cup, mm -hmm. and yeah, I won, I won with uh, switch without. I won with it. I played four Enhanced Hammer and four for Drift Blue. <laughs> yeah, we, we almost played the exact same list, I yeah. think. And it, it, it was a strong deck at this day. I played against seven Plasma decks. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't okay. really have to use Genesect at all. True, you just got those auto wins. Of yeah. course. Okay. Four for Drift Blue 9. Yeah, exactly. Now I guess the uh, the next question is, what is your local scene like? Uh, what I mean by this is, how many players do you usually have at your tournaments? At your local scenes, like your local tournaments, you have competitive players or people that are playing for fun. Uh, well, the thing, well, Fati and me live pretty much at the same place. Okay. So, yeah. I guess I answer for both of us. But you can uh, say if I get something wrong. Well, we have a lot of competitive players here in the West. We have um, we have Stephen Mao. I don't know if you know him, but we have a lot of people here who won nationals and attended at Worlds. So the tournaments are always a bit weird because you have a lot of good players. And also I played a league challenge with eight people and five of them had their Worlds invite. <laughs> and so annoying. Uh, also we are close to the Netherlands and Belgium. So we have uh, good players from other countries who come to our, uh, to our tournaments. We have, well, at, at the regional championship in my city, we had a lot of people from Belgium. Uh, one, of the, one of them got the top 22 and one of them finished uh, 25th. I was there, a lot of people from, uh, from the mm, what, uh, East Germany was there, like Karl Peters, who was uh, national champion, who used to be national champion. So we have about usually about 80 players at our regional championships, about 50 players at our city championship and our league challenges. Uh, it's just random. Sometimes we have six players, sometimes we have 16. It doesn't really like this. And it always really depends on which date the, in the tournament is because, we, ha for example, we had one day in Germany where we had three regional championships in Germany at the same day. Okay. And that was very very annoying because the most regional championship didn't get that much of attendance. And then we had a week with no regional at all. And it depends when the other guys have their regional championships. 
and also um, where it is, it's, it's easy to access by train or by car. Uh, but usually we have about 80 players at Region Okay. Yeah, I'm from Berlin, which is in the east of Germany. Um, the problem about Berlin is that the next bigger city is at least two hours uh, of uh, drive away. Uh, so I have to travel a lot to uh, get to other tournaments besides Berlin. There are not many tournaments in Berlin, but when there is a tournament, it uh, is uh, well visited uh, most of the times. So like the Arena Cup in Berlin was uh, one of the uh, biggest tournaments uh, last year. It was the uh, biggest German tournament. Yeah. Uh, okay. And um, yeah, our regional championships. Uh, it depends on uh, the other uh, dates, as uh, David says. Uh, when the players from West Germany or from Hamburg or from uh, Leipzig and Stuttgart uh, come over to Berlin, then it becomes a, a very big tournament. If they don't, we have a regional with like uh, 20 players. Um, it's kind of uh, strange here, but uh, it's still competitive because uh, Berlin is uh, a place where the players uh, got better uh, over the course of the last years. Uh, we were a kind of weak uh, city back uh, four, five years back or something like that, mm -hmm. but uh, we managed to win nationals uh, in, in juniors division three times, in senior division uh, another two times, and in masters division another time. Uh, over the last five years, so uh, we have a lot of uh, we have had a lot of, lot of success in the last uh, few years, and uh, yeah, we are still uh, trying to get better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, like uh, David said, for us too, it's almost the same because we live here in North Rhine-Westphalia, which is the west in Germany. Best state <laughs> yes. in Germany. And. Um, yeah, the attendance at our tournaments in the West is pretty decent, like you said, and uh, what I wanted to add is that we also have some um, Danish players most of the time coming from the North to the West, which is also a huge, and yes, I think that um, a lower attendance here in Germany isn't really that favorable, because um, we have a lot of good players here, and uh, we aren't that many, but um, yeah, the competition is also very high here in Germany. I would say in Europe, general. Okay. Well, we talked about traveling some with the trains and everything. Um, what's the average amount of time you think you'd spend going to a regionals or nationals, and what's the furthest you've traveled for a tournament? I think the average time. Well, sometimes you travel a lot, and sometimes it's just at your house door. But I think the average time is like five hours. Okay. Because I I all <laughs> I go by bus uh, or couch. Uh, so yeah, it's cheap, but it takes a lot of time. <laughs> and the far for a tournament at all, or yeah, yeah, for yeah. regional. Well, yeah. What's the furthest you've ever traveled for a tournament? Yeah, of course, it's World Championship. <laughs> Okay, yeah, true, okay, I guess, uh... <laughs> uh yeah, be beside World Championship, <laughs> yeah. um, I think the furthest was in Prague. I was in Praha um, for the European Prague Cup mm -hmm. back in 2011. It was like, I don't know, 15 hours by bus or Ooh. 16, mm. because you have to go through whole Germany and then... Uh, well, we had to change the bus, so we had to go to Austria first, and then from Austria to Praha. Okay. So it took a lot of time. But the tournament was very cool because it was in a hotel, so like Worlds, but a little uh, smaller. And we had a lot of people from like the UK there as well, and Italy and stuff. So it was worth it. Okay. Yeah, but the average time uh, that it takes for me to get to tournaments is... Uh, three to four hours, I think. Uh, most of the time we take the car and uh, drive to our tournaments. Uh, mm, for example, the national championships in Stuttgart uh, this year were a seven-hour drive, so it was uh, quite far away. <laughs> and But the tournaments in Hamburg or Hannover or Leipzig are uh, two hours to three hours. Uh, the furthest 
uh, one that I traveled besides Worlds was a regional championship in Manchester in 2012. I traveled to England to meet some friends there and then I decided, okay, uh, there's a tournament this weekend, uh, why don't just go there and, and play it. Uh, yeah, we met uh, Tom Hall, I think uh, some guys knew him, and uh, he took us from the south of England uh, to Manchester by car and uh, uh, back to. Uh, uh, yeah, if, if you see it, Tom, uh, thank you again for, for doing this for, for us. It was a, a nice tournament and uh, nice to have you uh, driving us too. Manchester. Yes, uh, for me it would be also four or five hours for a regional and average. If, for example, if I want to travel to Hamburg in the north of Germany, it would me took about with bus. It would took about four or five hours, mm -hmm. and by train it would be three hours, I think. Yeah, and the furthest one I traveled was this year when I traveled to Salzburg, and that was fourteen hours by bus, I think, which. <laughs> was very painful <laughs> at that day because it was hot and uh, the bus I had to change the bus twice I think and I was also sick so it wasn't that good at that day <laughs> how'd you end up doing at the tournament though yeah I started four no it, I started 301 with that whole Hante deck which was new at that time and then I ended up losing against uh, metal deck which Mark was <laughs> very <laughs> painful <laughs> due to uh, three tail slips in a row with rebirth in a important um, point at the game but I also played the matchup wrong so it wouldn't matter anyway and in the last round um, I lost against what was it Landorus Crovet right because I ended up starting with Jirachi and ho -Oh and stuff and uh, it was bad <laughs> luck at the end okay Alright, so I guess the uh, next question is, have you participated in the Worlds, and if you have, what has been your best record? <laughs> or I guess, how about I, this, Bas best placement, just in case if there's some weird Worlds where there's more rounds than others. I, I played Worlds once, okay. uh, last year, because last year was the only year, year where I had enough money to go there, and I played uh, Trevenant and the Selgor with all Dusknor, so I think there was like one... US player who played a similar deck, basically the same, and also a friend of mine was uh, top 32 with the same list, but I had to play, well I won the first two rounds and then I played against a Japanese guy with uh, version Genesect, against some other guy with version Genesect, and then I played against Evil Tal Keldeo, he played for Keldeo, and usually it's, it's not a problem for me to play against Kaleo because you can just Lysander, Silver Bang, and knock it out. Uh, but I had my Silver Bang all prized, and with like a lot of Kaleo, I, I wasn't able to uh, win this. And then I played against a Blast Toys who had like one turn where he played Lysander, Candy, Blast Toys, and had four energy cards at his uh, Kaleo. And I couldn't keep up with this, and then I lost, I dropped. Uh, I was like... Uh, Two, four, or something, not yeah. that good. So you just did like a lot of bad luck, basically? Well, yeah, with <laughs> bad matchups. Also, the meta yeah. call wasn't that good because you had a lot of version genesect in the tournament. So, well, but I don't care. Worlds is more for fun, not for winning. Okay. I participated uh, in 2012, 13, and 14. And uh, the first one was the successful one for me. I played electric as I mentioned before and I was 5-2 uh, at the end. Um, I, I, won I, I lost the first round because I got dunked by a Terrakion on my um, Tynemo. I had only this Tynemo and passed my turn. My opponent put on the energy, passed. Then I licensed some of, uh, no, captured <laughs> one of his Pokemon. And uh, uh, ho hoped for uh, he uh, hoped for that he didn't have a uh, switch, but he had that switch, uh, another energy, and dunked me. Oh. And the second was one I lost was against Igor Costa. Um, 2012 was his uh, first win at uh, Worlds, and I uh, didn't know him before, and so I I didn't know uh, how good he was at that time, and he he rushed me completely in in this game. 
Uh, but I placed 27th uh, in the end uh, with my 5-2 record. The next year uh, wasn't that successful. Uh, yeah, I started 3-0 and then went 3-5. I don't know uh, how could this could happen. And uh, the the 2014 uh, 14 was was better. Um, I played a strange deck. It wasn't really good against the meta. I played Landorus EX with uh, Driftblum, Enhanced Hammer, also a Chandelu EX. Um, it was designed to beat Pyro and Plasma. Um, I got a Plasma in the first round. It was a, such a fairy Plasma deck. Then in the next three rounds, I got a Blast Toys and two Verizon Genesec, which are uh, complete auto losses. But I managed to win uh, the first round of best of three every time because I think my opponents just didn't know uh, how to uh, go against this deck. Um, so in the end, there was two. Uh, two ties against Blastoise and Genesect and one uh, loss against Genesect. After that I got four Plasma opponents which I beat in a row and a Pyro opponent um, which I beat and then uh, I lost my last round uh, against an Iberta deck uh, against Dian Nielsen who played very well. He placed ninth uh, in the end uh, or tenth I think and I was 60, no, 37th. I don't know, but even if I had won this round, I would have been only 10th or 9th or something like that. So top eight wasn't in re uh, reach for me. Uh, but yeah, I, it was it would have been nice to win this and get uh, top 10 at Worlds or, or something like that. It would have been cool, but okay. Yeah, true. This this year I I try to uh, play a more competitive deck than that year. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun deck. It was uh, a version from Japan, uh, which was successful there, and uh, I uh, tested it uh, two uh, days before Worlds, and I, I really wanted to play it because it was cool and uh, it was fun to play. Um, I have the problem that I uh, don't like to play the uh, the very good decks, but the decks who are the most fun for me. And uh, yeah, maybe I, I try to change the test, uh, change it this year, and play the most competitive deck. And yeah, we'll see how far I will get. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's the first time at Worlds for me this year. So I'm I'm very suspense, and I'm very happy to attend to my first Worlds this year, my Great. second season. Okay. Hopefully you do great this year at Worlds, and you can say that you won your first year at Worlds. That'd be crazy if you can say that. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess the uh, the next question is talking about Worlds. What decks are you expecting to see at Worlds? Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting to see what like different countries are thinking about, like what they expect to see at Worlds. I don't know. I never. Uh, I'm. I'm usually I'm pretty good at doing meta calls, but I'm only good at it because I know like every person personally who was going to the tournament, but World Championship always had new people, other people, uh, every time they think different or they just overthink themselves, so like, I think this will be played a lot and I know other people think that this is a good deck, so they will play like this and they overthink and just play a random deck, so I, I don't really, I don't think it's predictable. Um, I just think that there, I don't know, I, I, I actually wanted to say it. I don't think there will be that much Vylord, but you could think like, okay, no one expects Vylord, so I can win because no one plays Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, I have no idea. This is, yeah. My answer is I have no idea. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, this year, compared to the other years uh, that I played at Worlds, uh, there is a broad variety of, of decks. Um, as David said, is it is uh, kind of hard to uh, predict anything. Uh, Waylord is the best best example. Maybe there will be players uh, which play Waylord, but it uh, depends on uh, which opponent they get. And uh, yeah, other decks that I uh, expect are uh, metal decks uh, like uh, the Kling Clang version, which was played at US Nationals, or the Metal Ray version. Um, then there will be a lot of Toad, I think. Uh, mm, what else could there be? I, I haven't seen much Iveltal in the last uh, 
a few weeks, so I don't know if it will become better uh, at Worlds again. I don't know. <laughs> mm, what other decks are there? Maybe Raichu decks, uh, although I, I don't uh, like Raichu very much. <laughs> but maybe it, uh, it's uh, just the case be, uh, because I played uh, a lot of Lando bets in the last tournament, so Raichu always, always, always was an easy win for me. And yeah, which other decks are there? Mm, I think those uh, are already the most important ones. Yeah. You uh, can play Pikachu with Raichu deck. <laughs> yeah. You mean Pikachu X? <laughs> <laughs> the new one. I think, uh, don't play Evotol though. I don't think, I played Evotol at Nationals. It didn't, it didn't do so well. So, really? Uh, uh, don't, don't play, oh. I don't, don't suggest that deck. <laughs> <laughs> With the Manacric spam at US Nationals. It. <laughs> yeah, I played Evotol at ECC and I faced five Manectric opponents and <laughs> when I talked to my friends they were like, who, uh, why did you play against Manectric? We haven't seen any uh, Manectric at all <laughs> and I played against five Manectric and uh, yeah. But at least I, I didn't lose one, one game. I was 4 or 5 in, the, in this tournament in the end. <laughs> I wasn't that lucky, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Night March is pretty strong right now with the, the absence yeah. of Landorus and Night, Night March has such a good matchup against most of the field and it is so consistent in my opinion so it should see a lot of play at uh, Worlds. I think Waylord is also still a strong deck because I don't think people will really take for it and if they don't, Waylord can start doing damage like at US Nationals again. It's, it was it was cruel to see a deck like this <laughs> going over all these meta decks. It was painful to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it was painful to watch. Ca kind of funny, but at the <laughs> end, just ask how, 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 how can this work? And um, yeah, Night March, Waylord, and I think that um, Raichu decks should be still popular. Okay. I told, of course. I guess, just a quick question, do you think it's safe to just put one Bunnelby in your deck just in case you do play against a Whaler? Just cut, fi just play 59 <laughs> cards one Bunnelby. Is that, you think it's a good idea overall or no? Yeah, the, the point is, Bunnelby is not also good against Waylord. It's uh, as some niche uh, backup strategies in my opinion. For example, I did tag it in a League Challenge l last week or two weeks ago and um, there was a Waylord play and I just tagged against him. So in the end I ended up losing against him because I ended up having two energies prized and my only switching option so I couldn't get the Bunnelby in the active spot. So it's still not a safe auto win with Bunnelby mm -hmm. but uh, the backup strategies were pretty decent like getting back DCEs with Bunnelby and also I think I ended up milling a deck uh, 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 opponent with uh, what is it called? Rot Roto Miller or Roto something Rilla. like this. <laughs> yeah, I ended up uh, here copying his ability and uh, with new, so it was kind of funny. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that Bumblebee really depends on which deck you play, and in some decks Bumblebee actually makes sense. Yeah, right. For example, uh, if you play like uh, a Ray Crazer deck, Bumblebee is just another basic Pokemon you can drop. And also, if you like with the attack, you can retreat into Bunnelby and uh, yeah, like use Metal Link before retreat into Bunnelby, attack at DCE back a Bronzong or a DC and a uh, Skyfield or a Sk Sacred Ash. Mm. And in decks like Kyogre, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense because uh, in no matchup you will be able to attack with it. And even against Waylord, it will be hard because you can just like uh, play Sarasik on your Floatstone from Kaldu and then Lysan under the Flo uh, the Kaldu. And all that kind of stuff. I think in, in some decks it makes sense, and you can use it against other decks than Waylord. And I think this deck might play Bumblebee, but not every deck. Yeah, I think uh, oh, uh, there's uh, everything already said about uh, Bunnelby. Uh, Bunnelby. I think it is good in some decks, but uh, many decks have to think about. Uh, if there is a, a better card for other matchups that they could play. Yeah. So there's uh, always 60 cards to play and you have to figure out uh, which one are the, the best 60 cards and I I don't really know if it's worth uh, countering Waylord at Worlds. I don't know, maybe it is, maybe not. <laughs> it's too hard to tell, I guess. Yeah. Alright, so I guess uh, 
it's the last world's question here. You had to pick one person to win worlds besides yourself. Who would it be? I think Niklas. Because he had a very strong season. And I think he is very, very decent and just plain. Uh, he won the, the European Championship this year. He was second at the Nationals. And the finals were very, very close. And he, he plays very good, and he also always have like some idea to make his deck, um, like to give his deck uh, that special edge you need sometimes. Uh, for example, he had at nationals like one uh, one Jetsus, and uh, we both played at the European Championship this year. I was top four, and he won it. We played um, Golbot in the version Genesis, and it was just like it was a, a huge tournament. And, like, for example, I had one game where I started with Zubat, just with Zubat, and my opponent discards his Spirit Tool. I played version Genesec, so, <laughs> like, this, this kind of stuff happens if you just play something a bit different. And some people ask me after the game, like, do you even play Super Scoop? And I was like, no, I play, <laughs> I play two Zubat and two, two Golbats, <laughs> just, um, just for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think, I think Niklas has a good chance okay. of winning. Yeah, I, w I would also pay, uh, pick Niklas Nenatopel because uh, uh, all Germans want to see uh, a German uh, on top of this and Niklas is one of the most consistent players over uh, the course of this season, uh, as David already mentioned, and uh, I think uh, he can uh, go at least to top 8 and after that uh, it's kind of a gamble who, who wins in the end. And yeah, I'm I'm really hoping for a German player. And if I had to pick one, I could I would pick Niklas. Yeah. Yeah, I would also pick Niklas. Like <laughs> he's the current European champion, and uh, second at the our nationals. But he got second with a lot of bad luck, to be honest. And um, so he, he has a very consistent run this season, I think. He cut all events, he said, except one regional where he lost because he priced four toads. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> no, not true. I, I kicked, I kicked him, uh, I kicked him out of two city championships. Yeah, okay, cities, okay. <laughs> it, it, it I can have it. I did a worst cut, top cut as well, as well. Okay, but uh, overall, I think he is is like at one thousand two hundred championship points right now, and. Um, with like 30 play points or something like this, so that's yeah, 38, absolutely that's, phenomenal in my opinion, and he would deserve it this year. That's that's crazy. I know I had like 72, and I was nowhere close to that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have nationals. He has like he has he has 800 points from two tournaments, mm -hmm. which are like um, eight play points. <laughs> <laughs> That is pretty crazy. That's amazing. I can see why y'all decided to pick him. But uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess uh, talking about championship points, how many championship points did you end on, and what was the deck that gets you the most points? I have 890 championship points, mm -hmm. uh, which is not enough for European players because uh, you actually have to get more points. You need at least 950 uh, for top 22 year. And I whiffed it. Uh, it was very annoying. Uh, the question is hard to answer because I got uh, 300 points worth version Genesect and I got 300 points worth uh, Saves Me Toad Slowpuff. And I got. Uh, yeah, this is like the most points I got from these two decks. Uh, I enjoy version Genesect more. Because this was actually a lot of fun to play, and I only played Save Me Toad Slowpuff because it won. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't really like the deck because it was just so annoying to play, or also annoying to play against sure. with four Super Scoop Up and Crushing Hammer. But it was I won with this deck, so I played it. Yeah, but I think version Genesect is my choice. Okay. Yeah, I'm at six hundred and fifty championship points. Uh, the first half of the season, I uh, had a lot of problems uh, getting championship points until cities, where I changed to play Iviltal uh, a little bit more. Um, 
Mm, then I also played a Manectric deck, which uh, won me a city championship. And uh, in the end of the season, I switched to Landobats for Nationals and uh, Arena Cup, uh, which gave me the most points in the season, I think, over over 150 points alone from uh, Landobats. Um, I think those are the decks that I uh, played the most uh, successful this year. Um. Yeah, and for me, it w I, I end up always switching my decks, so I never play the same deck twice in a row in a tournament. So for me, it would be Pyra. Like, it gave me 150 points for that win in the Arena Cup, and Mega Gardevoir for Nationals. It also gave me 150 points for Top 4. Okay, how many points did you end up with? I ended up having 692 points. Okay. Fair enough. That's, I mean, y'all had really high play championship points, so congratulations. No, thank you. Okay. Thanks. I guess the uh, the next question is, uh, if you could make one change to Pokemon, what would it be? Like, it could be tournaments, it could be cards, it could be rules. If you, had, if you could make one change, what would it be and why? Well, I would, I would change that national stuff, European... Well, the top 22 in European just didn't make sense, because... Uh, you had tournaments that no one is allowed to attend because they are from another country. Because of this, you had national championships with 11 players, and the winner got 500 championship points. Like, just imagine winning an 11-player tournament, and you get 500 points, and, uh, and no one is allowed to play this tournament, only people from a special country. Mm. And, well, the thing with nationals is, at some countries, if you win, you get, like, literally you get nothing for winning. Only a few players get something if they win. So a lot of people just forfeited their national championships. So, for example, we had a live stream at some country, and the guy who lost top four won the, champ uh, won the finals. Uh, just because, yeah, the other guy who, who won against him top four was like, okay, if I win the finals, I get nothing. But if you win the finals, you get a trip. So, in some countries, the people just forfeited against each other, but some countries actually had a prize support, like Germany, France, the UK, and I'm pretty sure Italy had one as well. So, at these countries, it was super hard to win, and in other countries, they were just like, okay, do you want to forfeit? And they just forfeited. And I, I would change like that everything that used to be a national championship this season, you just say it's a regional. Our old regionals, you can make them like a state championship and uh, the only national championship like is the European championship. So that would just be, you say like Europe is like uh, the USA and the countries here are handled like there are states from the USA. Um, or you say every tournament in Germany is only for German players. But not that mixed church stuff where I can go to a regional in Switzerland, but I cannot play the Switzerland National Championship, so I will change this. Okay. I would like to see uh, more complex cards uh, again. I started playing com competitively when uh, there were cards uh, that you had to read uh, at least twice to really understand them and then maybe think about them at least five uh, times more to figure out what uh, deck did you, uh, could you play with them. And uh, if you compare just uh, the text on the cards uh, later in, uh, later back in 2000 and let's say seven, which uh, the text on the cards now, it's uh, like this, this text in this uh, kind of uh, font uh, back then, and uh, like this text in this font uh, this, uh, this year or last year. Um, <laughs> I, I liked uh, the cards until uh, yeah, until black and white I think maybe maybe until uh, noble victories I think it, it changed when uh, next destinies came out with Mewtwo Rex and uh, the power creep just uh, was uh, too too extreme uh, later uh, I think Mewtwo changed a lot. Uh, Darkrai was actually okay, but uh, they uh, didn't print uh, more cards that were uh, that complex as back in 2008 or 7 or 9. Even when you think about decks like uh, Gyarados, 
which uh, were when when they uh, when they were established, uh, guys said, okay, this is a kind of a boring deck because it's so easy to play. Yeah. But what uh, most of them didn't see is how complex it was to just invent this deck at all. So uh, it wasn't like okay. Uh, now Gyarados came out. It's obvious to play Gyarados. No, you had to uh, you had to think about it and uh, find out the strategy. And uh, it was out for at least half a year bec uh, before anyone uh, tried out uh, Gyarados at all. Yeah, I would like to see it again. Okay. Yeah, for me it would be the uh, the, the ties because um, I think the the rules with the ties they aren't that good like they are right now at the moment. I still think that ties are okay if they're, if two people in Swiss rounds are equally good and uh, in game three for example there aren't any prizes uh, gone to each player and it's still equal in prizes like 6-6 six, six in the start of the game and in three turns no one is going to play uh, going to draw a prize card but uh, the, for me for example there were so many situations where uh, it was 1-1 one, one in Swiss rounds and it was the final round and I had to win but I ended up tying and losing because um, there wasn't plenty of time left but in ga the game state of game 3 was like uh, if that game goes on for like 2 or 3 turns uh, I, w I would end up winning this but in the end it was a, uh, it was a tie most of the time and I think that uh, that rule isn't that good ri like it is right now they have to work on it, in my opinion. Okay. I like how they, each one of y'all gave a different answer, so that's pretty cool there. They all, all have different <laughs> suggestions. It's really nice to see that. But uh, I guess the the last question here is, uh, do you give any shout-outs to anybody? Yeah, yeah. We, for, for me, for example, I would like to greet uh, Mark Lutz, which is a very strong player in Germany, and greetings to him. I would I would greet um, Philip Hombach. He's senior player. He is senior European champion and senior national champion. And uh, he he takes me to worlds because I'm so poor. <laughs> and uh, I very I thank you very much for this. <laughs> yeah, I would like to do a shout out to my uh, team card readers uh, who uh, accompany me most to most tournaments. And I would also like to greet uh, Niklas Lennart Rappel, uh, who uh, will be my uh, uh, roommate at Worlds. Uh, he won uh, a room for four persons, and uh, he gives away three uh, three of his uh, beds in this room uh, for I don't know 100 euros or something like that. Uh, otherwise, I, I couldn't uh, afford uh, this uh, living in this hotel at, at Worlds. So. Thank you very much for that, Niklas. N Niklas, <laughs> Niklas has a YouTube channel. Oh, does he? Why? Yes. What is it? Uh, Raffelmann. I, I can I can send you the link. Okay, sweet. And I'll put make sure I put it down in the description. I'll give him a shout out and everything like that to uh, mm. help him out. But uh, yeah, guys. All right. So uh, thank you so much for doing this. I really do appreciate y'all doing this interview, and uh, it means a lot to me. Hopefully, everybody watching this learns something new about Germany and the players there. But uh, thank y'all so much for doing this once again. Hopefully, I'll see you at Worlds. Can't wait to meet y'all there. Uh, Y'all take care, and yeah. thanks for everybody for yeah. watching. See you then. All right, bye. And good night. Yeah, good night, or good day, good morning. <laughs> Depends where you are right now. It could be any time. But yeah, I, th I think you're going to sleep now. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, bye YouTube channel. Okay. Bye bye.